All right, uh, it's time to start. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, today, we are going to uh, talk about the civil infrastructure platform uh, in powering sustainable living with industrial grade Linux. And before we dive in, uh, let me introduce myself. And my name is Yoshitake Kobayashi. I'm a CIP Technical Selling Committee Chair. And I also have been working with the Toshiba for more than 15 years. And uh, my uh, main role for uh, embedded systems in uh, Toshiba products. So that is why I'm here in today. So here's what we cover today. And uh, I'll start with an introduction to CIP. Then uh, we will explore uh, our key challenges and uh, how CIP solved uh, this kind of uh, challenges through collaboration. And we also talk about look how CIP enhances cyber resilience, uh, which is one of the hot topic recently. And by the end of the sessions, uh, I hope you have a clear idea how CIP helps uh, improving sustainability for our lives. And CIP is uh, one of the Linux Foundation open source project. Uh, we are collaborating uh, to solve issues for our sustainable life. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, supported uh, by uh, industry leaders such as Renesa, Siemens, and Toshiba. And we also have several silver members. And this uh, diverse of membership uh, helps CIP meet uh, to help our real world's needs. And before we get into the detail, I also would like to highlight uh, our exciting upcoming event. So we are hosting a CIP mini summit on uh, September 19th. So this week, at the same uh, venue here. And if you have some time, uh, please uh, join this event. I think uh, we, you know, some, uh, we still open the registrations. And uh, this is a great opportunity to meet, uh, yeah, such kind of uh, members in person and also share ideas and uh, yeah, to find uh, collaboration opportunities. So we are really looking forward to seeing you here uh, in person. Okay, uh, let's dive in uh, what CIP is all about. So look around you. So Linux is everywhere. So just think about the, the trains you're riding on, uh, for example, come here and the power plants uh, supplying electricity to your PC or refrigerator, something like that. So these kinds of hidden uh, industrial IoT systems are uh, the backbone of our life. And they are already run on Linux. So it's crucial to understand this because uh, any issues on this critical infrastructure directly affect our life. So civil infrastructure faces unique challenges. One of the most important significant is uh, extended life cycles of these systems. So let's look at these timelines. The orange box is the year of kernel release. For example, 4.4 .4 kernel released on uh, 2016. And these blue or green bar shown the minimum product life cycle for the product. So we try to use a recent kernel as, uh, as possible, but uh, we still have a gap. You can see a white box in between orange and blue boxes. During this phase, we developed the product. So that, and the blue bar shows uh, the kernel version released in 2016, um, might need support until around 2035. It's quite a long time. This longevity introduces complex maintenance and security challenges. Another major concern is increasing cyber resilience threats to those systems. Since around uh, 2018, um, incidents in OT systems have nearly doubled each year. This is not just a number. It means real threats to our power grid, transportation, and other critical infrastructure systems. So we are difficult to expect 
when these kinds of threats or attacks will happen. So governments are already taking actions. Uh, we are seeing uh, new uh, activities like uh, EU Cyber Resilience Act and also a US executive order on improving cyber security. So these activities are pushing industries to prioritize cyber resilience. So we still may have our time to align such kind of activities. But it's clear to understand this is no longer optional. It's nearly mandatory now. And cyber resilience uh, isn't just about preventing attack. It's about creating systems that can anticipate threats, withstand attacks, recover quickly, and adapt. So think of it as a cycle. Uh, prepare, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So this holistic approach is a key to maintain strong, secure systems in the face of future threats. And achieving this goal is not simple. Uh, we need to apply IoT concept to industrial systems while ensuring they meet strict requirements. We have to guarantee quality and longevity for products that have decades life cycle. So keeping millions of connected systems secure, ensuring backwards compatibility, and meeting various standards with reliability, safety, and real-time capabilities. So it's quite complex in balancing act. So this is uh, where CIP comes in. Our mission is to establish an open source base layer of industrial grade software for civil infrastructure systems. We are building the foundation for secure, uh, reliable, and long lasting infrastructure. And our solution is open source base layer, which is called OSBL. So this is a foundation on which companies can build their applications. We provide CIP core package and also CIP super long term supported kernel. So by offering this open source base layer, we enable developers and companies to create more resilient systems without having, no, having to reinvent the wheel. Using CIP OSBL in your company, uh, you can reduce effort by up to 70% in areas like uh, software maintenance, vulnerability monitoring, and application adaptations. So CIP scope is comprehensive. So the scope covers everything from uh, software stacks left there to tools and concept for product development and maintenance. And as shown in this slide, uh, we are currently uh, focusing on six key activities. These activities include providing a super long-term support kernel with real-time support and offering real-time you know, reference implementations at CIP core, as, and testing CIP software stacks, aligning with cybersecurity standards, and providing a safe and secure update mechanism. So these six key activities we are currently doing lots. And CIP strength comes from the member companies. So we have a diverse of groups of developers and maintainers who contribute their expertise. And their efforts combined with our financial support from our members allow us to fund selected um, open source projects and also contribute to upstream uh, to open source projects. So our key principle is upstream first. So we actively complete, uh, contribute to and collaborate with upstream project, uh, something so the top. 
and then integrate their work into the CIP open source space layer. So this approach ensures we are not working in isolation, but are part of the uh, open source ecosystem. So now uh, let's dive in um, actual activities in CIP projects to explain how we solve the key challenges together. The first and key activity is super long-term support kernel development. So got the, uh, our kernel team is committed to providing kernel versions uh, with a maintenance period of more than 10 years, ensuring compatibility and reliability throughout the life cycle. The kernel team also actively monitors uh, security advisories such as CVE and uh, backport fixes from the main line and LTS kernel into the super long term support kernel versions. This ensures that uh, infrastructure remains protected against vulnerabilities while maintaining uh, compatibilities. So CIP projects uh, follow an upstream first approach, that meaning any features and fixes are contributed to the upstream first before being the integrated to backport into the CIP SLTS kernel. This allows uh, CIP to remain uh, aligned with a global open source community, ensuring long-term sustainability and also security. This collaborative effort allows the CIP um, to support multiple architecture and platforms, ensuring its uh, broad applications across uh, various industries. Now uh, let's, look at some, uh, let's look at some numbers uh, for our achievements in kernel development. So we currently support four kernel versions, 4.4, 4.19, 5.10, 6.1. And each of these comes with both uh, regular and real-time versions. That means we are currently support eight variant kernels. And our kernel support extends across, across multiple architectures. And we tested uh, our CIP kernel with us on uh, 10 different uh, platforms, uh, which is covering four CPU architectures, x86 uh, and ARM version 7, ARM v8, and RISC 64. So this both support ensures CIP can be used in wide range of civil infrastructure platforms. And this is a timeline for each LTS and SLTS kernel. During the LTS period, CIP SLTS follows just uh, relative LTS tree. And once LTS support period is finished, uh, CIP starts self-maintenance to extend their maintenance period. Um, so please make, uh, no, I, one note uh, I'd like to say here is uh, during the maintenance period, uh, we have limited uh, coverage for the uh, Linux kernel because to all uh, features, uh, it's quite difficult to support. So we have uh, some limited configuration set available in our CIP repository. So that is uh, what actually CIP covers for super long term support period. And this table displays our current CIP SLTS kernel versions along with their project, uh, projected end of life cycle. And target release candidates here. So as you can see, uh, the older kind of like 4.4, uh, the uh, a longer release cadence uh, compared with the newer one. So we don't just uh, maintain kernels, also we also uh, testing. So our CIP testing covers a wide range of reference ports. Uh, we test uh, both standard uh, configuration and real-time configurations across various platforms, ensuring compatibility and uh, reliability. So today I had a really good news in, uh, during the Linux sessions, and now, uh, no, 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 soon, uh, real-time patch is uh, upstream. 
I have, uh, that is really nice news for us <laughs> because currently we are maintaining uh, two variants, uh, normal one and real time one. But the uh, next version, maybe only one version for both uh, configurations. So, one of our recent initiatives uh, is a unified kernel configs. So, we are creating superset of all kernel configs for architecture. And this allows uh, multiple reference boards to be supported by one configuration. So simplifying, uh, that's simplifying maintenance and improving uh, consistency across uh, platforms. And CIP kernel also constantly work uh, with upstream. So they review patches and check for CVs and make significant contributions. In, uh, this year alone, uh, we made approximately uh, 600 fixes uh, into the CIP 6.1 kernel and over 350 contributions uh, to version uh, 6.1 maintenance. So this uh, ongoing effort keeps our kernel secure and up to date. We also made a numerous common number releases across all supported versions. For example, uh, we've had uh, 89 uh, releases for 4.4 and 111 for 4.19, something like that. So these numbers demonstrate our commitment to long-term support and continuous improvement. So achieving this um, manually would require a huge amount of effort for the, our current team. To support these, their activities, we also developed uh, several tools as uh, shown in this slide. CIP KernelSec uh, tracks the status of security issues identified by CVID across mainline, stable, and other branches, also including CIP kernels. With this tool, uh, we can easily identify which CVE affects the kernel. However, uh, after uh, Linux becomes the CNA, uh, the volume of uh, generated information is uh, significantly increasing. So to address these uh, issues, we also are uh, developing uh, automating the triage process using C kernel CVE sec, so which is currently uh, in the preview stage and will soon become an official uh, project soon. And now uh, let's uh, let, uh, demonstrate that. So this is the kernel versions, uh, version 4, uh, 5.10. And when we would like to start to uh, check the CV, which uh, CV effect affects the version 5.10218 CIP49, something like this. But it takes about five, five minutes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> To avoid this, yeah, I can show you the results. Okay, here. So, yeah, when we count uh, the number of CBAs uh, for uh, 510218, uh, it's about more than 700. <laughs> so, this is quite a lot. So, we should uh, filter which uh, CVE actually affects uh, our CIP kernel. So this is why uh, CIP, uh, CIP project try to create CIP triage. So uh, you can uh, download uh, this tool uh, from our CIP GitLab repositories, but uh, also uh, you can uh, find a manual how to use so if I want to uh, yeah, check the uh, relative CVEs for uh, that kernel, uh, this command doing that. And this is automatically also triaging uh, which, uh, tri uh, which CVE uh, related to uh, which configurations. But it takes about 20 minutes for that. <laughs> 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 All right, so yeah, so yeah, 
I already <laughs> done that. So as you can see, uh, these results, uh, for example, on top, uh, this CV is filtered. That means uh, not relative with these configurations. And then go to manual. So yeah, if uh, that's something says result uh, manual, that means we need to uh, check uh, manually. It's still uh, maybe a lot, but uh, much better than before. So, yeah, this is a kind of uh, what uh, currently CIP current team doing uh, to ensure the super long support period. The next um, one is CIP core working group. So this working group aims to provide reference implementations to support testing and development based on Debian. So this group maintains two uh, key profiles, one for generic profile as a, either CIP core, and which is under activity development, and the tiny profile, uh, which called Debian, and currently uh, maintenance mode. So both profiles are designed to serve uh, different use cases uh, within uh, civil infrastructure systems. And in addition, uh, this work group is uh, responsible to manage uh, CIP core packages, ensure that any package is requested from CIP members. Uh, for example, a CIP security working group requests some packages for security use cases. So CIP core uh, works on such kind of requirements. And furthermore, uh, CIP core uh, working group also uh, contributes to Debian LTS and extended LTS and also reproducible builds. So we are uh, deeply committed to uh, ensuring long-term su uh, sustainable systems. And since uh, 2018, uh, we've been uh, find funding Debian long-term support project. And more recently, uh, we are also uh, began participating in extended long-term support uh, for Debian 8 and Debian 10 to extend the lifespan of uh, systems we need. So this support uh, combined with the reproducibility efforts for CIP core images. And as you can see this table, uh, several uh, number of the CIP image now reproducible. So we are, uh, during these uh, implementations, uh, we contributed a lot uh, to reproducible builds project for the enhancing uh, transparency and security. And our software update working group is working to incorporate uh, robust update uh, solutions into CIP core. So this includes uh, features like uh, AB updates and also uh, yeah. <laughs> and also signed and encrypted event support and delta updates. So CIP is also working to integrate uh, the update framework, uh, which is called TUF with uh, SW update. Um, you can find a demonstration on um, level zero. So we uh, have a CIP booth here, uh, like this, and we have several demonstrations on the booth, which includes a software update demonstrations. So we have three demonstrations, IoT use case, software update, and also real time. So please come to uh, our booth to pick up some Legos available here. <laughs> so uh, let's move to security work groups. So CIP aims to provide open source base layer as common platform, but uh, we do not define uh, fixed use cases or requirements. So to address uh, the deliver, uh, diverse needs uh, different industries, uh, CIP adopts a generic approach for CIP users. So CIP security work group uh, offers a guideline and reference implementations uh, that help developers and companies uh, to align with IEC 62443 standards. These guidelines enable uh, companies to build secure systems that are resilient uh, against both cyber attacks and system failure. Uh, IC62443 uh, defines secure development process aimed at incorporating robust security elements 
into products, ensuring they are evolve with security as a core feature. These practices align with the building blocks of cyber resiliency. Security management um, encompasses uh, several key processes, such as secure development practices. Similarly, secure update management involves uh, processes that ensure systems are regularly updated, which timely uh, delivery of patches to keep the, um, updated. So by embedding these kind of practices, uh, the overall uh, security of systems is significantly improved. Uh, in this uh, event of the cyber attacks, uh, these measures ensure the systems can quickly uh, recover. So during the CIP IEC 624434-1 assessment, uh, the security working group uh, collaborated with a certification body to audit the processes following the uh, CIP and its upstream contributions. So we found uh, many uh, processes such as file integrity and development environment security can be effectively implemented by CIP and upstream. However, uh, there are some processes here um, that are product uh, uh, requirement specific for the products, which is do not uh, directly apply to CIP because uh, we are not uh, provide any products. So we try to some uh, generic approach for that. And CIP uh, security working group members actively developing additional guidelines uh, to help uh, CIP users to meet these product specific requirements. <laughs> And finally, uh, CIP completed IC 624434-1 compliance. <laughs> uh, this is just finished on August 28th, last month, two weeks ago. <laughs> as far as I know, I think a CIP is the first open source project gets a vari uh, verification of conformity of IC 624434-1 standards. So our next target is also achieving a compliance for CI, uh, IC 624434-2, uh, which is working in progress. So for 4-2, uh, uh, we are working on security verification and validation testing. So CIP members are working with uh, package maintenance to identify uh, which uh, uh, testing is missing on uh, Debian CI, also uh, upstream. And we found, uh, no, we currently using 142 packages installed our security image. And 19 uh, packages are found have no tests, even the upstream or Debian CI. So we uh, collaborate with upstream project to ensure and to enhance test coverage. And uh, during the uh, CIPIC 6443 uh, assessment, uh, we recognized the need uh, for robust documentation management to meet compliance requirements. So we are um, doing uh, such kind of maintenance versions, control, and also uh, uh, restructuring uh, across in, uh, sensitive uh, design and uh, security documents and ensure that uh, all uh, documents managed by the repository now. So you can find all documents hosted by uh, CIP GitLab repositories and to ensuring a transparency and proper version management. So I cover the most of CIA recent CIP activities. And before I conclude my presentations, um, let's have a look about the how CIP enhances cyber regimes, uh, which is a hot topic now. So first, uh, our long-term support model is key element, I think. As I explained, 
uh, we plan to provide a 10 plus year uh, maintenance period for our kernels and core packages. This means system built on CIP can remain secure and up to date uh, into the future, and which is crucial for our infrastructure with long life cycle. And we are also committed to using open source and upstream fast uh, principles. This approach leverages the collaborative expertise of global open source community, leading to faster identifications of vulnerability and more robust solutions. And our standardization effort is another key factor. So by providing a common uh, software platform as open source base layer, we reduce compatibility issues and simplify integrations. This supported by CIP testing. And let's look at some other um, ways and how CIP enhances cyber resilience. So we integrate a comprehensive security measures aligned with IEC 62443 standards. These activities about embedding security throughout the entire system lifecycle. Ensuring uh, these uh, standard adaptations, we are continuing monitoring and adaptations. So we provide CB monitoring for CIP kernel and CIP core, and we incorporated secure software update mechanism. You can see downstairs. So by combining all these elements, long-term support, community-driven improvement with upstream past principle, and standardization as an open source base layer, and comprehensive security integrations, and continuous monitoring and secure updates. So CIP provides a solid foundation for building and maintaining cyber resilience infrastructure systems. So as a wrap up, so let's quickly recap how CIP enhances our sustainable living. Our, civiliz our civilizations need an open source base layer of industrial grade Linux. And to achieve this goal, uh, we provide IC62443 compliant platform with long-term support, constantly updating it with uh, the latest security features and fixes. By embedding with our multiple open source project, uh, we tap into global expertise, which benefit both not CIP, just not only CIP users, and also a wider community. So remember, uh, collaboration is a key to ensuring sustainable living. So we'd love to invite industrial peers to join our project. Uh, your expertise can play a big role in shaping the future of civil infrastructure. And uh, just a quick reminder, so if, uh, if you have more time uh, here, so we are welcome to invite you uh, to come CIP Mini Summit on Thursday, September 19th. So that's a great chance to meet uh, each other in person and to find our collaboration opportunities. And stay in, uh, to stay in loop, uh, we have a, a mailing list and also a X account, share, uh, Atomac CIP project. And we also provide all uh, project output in the GitLab repositories. So please check if you like. So I covered a lot today, and it's time for your questions. Any questions? Yeah, please. Uh, so the super long, so the super LTS, uh, why don't you just uh make it the normal LTS after the end of the normal LTS. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are not on the LTS maintainers, so, and uh, we ask them if we can do them after us now. So the long story is that we don't maintain everything. So no, 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 or maybe we don't maintain everything as well. Uh, so they are like, there's a 390 change simply apply it, but we don't review it that much. If there's a report change, <laughs> so well, this is not LTS because we don't, we concentrate on stuff that really matters for us. But if you want to treat as LTS and have the maintenance and testing and so on, you are okay. Yeah, and there's, there's a other big difference. Uh, there are actually farms testing LTSs. One part, our best part 
Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, so LTS gets a lot of testing besides us, us and CIP kernels are basically only tested by us. So, like, uh, we don't get nearly as much testing. Yeah. Thanks, Pavel. Uh, next questions? Hi. So, also one question on the kernel side. Mm -hmm. So, like, one of the recent difficulty with the CNA change and so much CVE is that some CVE, well, there's some CVE uh, doesn't have a fixes tag, so it it can be quite difficult to find out where to back for it. And the other is that if you get really unlucky, you might have uh, maybe like six point ten patch that you have to backport to maybe like 4.4 .4 if you're like very unlucky. So like, how do you deal with these kind of difficulties? Yeah. Okay. Uh, today we have a good, nice <laughs> person. So yeah, we can. Yeah. I am not sure I want to answer this. <laughs> uh, so uh, th there's a lot of CVs. Yes. Uh, ignore them, basically. They are not generated by human, um, and uh, if there's something we, c if it's easy to backport, we backport it. If it's not easy, and this happened in past, I believe some of the mid CPU bug mitigations, we simply at our entry to the noun books file, documenting that you shouldn't be doing this. So if there's a CPU bug that requires. Uh, like extensive workarounds and uh, uh, we hope our embedded systems are not running uh, this type of crazy super high performance CPU, then we simply make a note uh, and uh, ignore the issue. So maybe to add on on that, it's actually basic the discussion inside the, the CIP project. So if there is something, like, like Pavel mentioned, um, something worth to discuss, um, should we do effort here? This is going to be discussed in the CIP project. Uh, ask the members, is there anything where you consider this relevant? Um, if not, we now document and leave it alone. And if yes, then we have to look into the effort and, and do yeah, an estimation if we can afford it or if someone else is doing that in the end. But yeah, the project lives also from this kind of feedback, which is a problem for all of these LTS projects. A lot of happy users, but no one really speaking up loudly enough to really explain where are the use cases. This is getting better a little bit on the LTS side and also on the CIP side, but it's still one of the key points that we need the feedback from both directions. Um, what are you using? What are you needing? And this is one way at CIP to express your need by the, the kernel configs, which define the support scope. And that's a privilege for the members. All right, thank you very much for explanations. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Actually, just to expand the question, what are the, the things that we will do? What are the, the requirements that we will do in the, after the uh, long-term support uh, from kernel is done? So in the self-maintenance -maintain mode, mm -hmm. what you will do? Backporting new CVs, uh, finding out new, just, I want to understand what is the effort and what is your responsibility here. Okay. Um, yeah, we are also uh, backporting uh, CV fix and also uh, upstream uh, kernel features. For example, uh, yeah, one of the features uh, comes from Lunesas uh, to support a recent uh, their uh, kernel no, board hardware. So this kind of two activities is currently we are doing but will you backport all the CVs patches because it's not possible? So how no. how do you pick? The ah, I see. Yeah, we are filtering that. <laughs> Maybe. So the process is fairly easy. Uh, uh, we, we are currently only long time maintaining the four four kernel. The others are still in the LTS phase. So we have upstream backing us up and we re rely on them there. We don't do much more than upstream does. And we initially try to back, like try to, if the patches apply, if they do, they do. And if they don't, we just review if we really need them. And if not, we just drop them on the floor 
or maybe make a note in the non bugged file if it's uh, something really serious. So if the issue is not fixed in 4.19 LTS, don't expect us to have it fixed. We generally don't do more than LTS. And uh, in a similar way, LTS drops patches if it's too much effort to backport them, we do that too. Subject to like uh, manual review, if it looks like something really critical, we put more effort to that. But most of the CVs are like some kind of boxes with no impact on performance. And uh, we just don't care too deeply about those. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh. Okay. Transformer and you boot. Is this something that is handled under uh, chip for ARM V8 architectures? Yeah. Um, your question is uh, untrusted firmware? Yes. Hmm? I don't know. No. 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 Uh, okay, so nothing for ARM trusted firmware. No. And about U boot? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, it's time for uh, finishing yeah, for my presentations. And if you have any questions, uh, please come here or come there. <laughs> uh, so uh, we are in here uh, during the event. Uh, please catch, uh, catch up with them. So uh, thanks, thank you very much for your attention and have a great day.